evening all. We're discussing here on Talk Radio the National Food Strategy Report saying tax sugar and salt and prescribe vegetables, according to the report. Uh, Henry Dimbleby, the uh, businessman who led the report, said taxes raised could extend free school meal provision and support better diets among the poorest, though Boris Johnson said he was not attracted to extra taxes on hard-working people, which means categorically that Boris Johnson will probably be putting taxes on hard-working people. Well, Anne Iachi is a weight loss and healthy lifestyle coach, author of Five Simple Steps to Realising You. And we're also joined by Portia Berry Gilby, Kilby, contributor to Young Voices UK. Both join me live here on Talk Radio. Evening to you both. Hello. So, Annie Archie, I'll start with you, uh, weight loss, healthy lifestyle coach. Um, in what way would taxing certain sugary and high calorie foods, how would that solve the obesity crisis? So it's not about making them more expensive. It's about um, if you read the report, it said that it was going to tax the uh, food manufacturers which means that uh, in return, their products will be more expensive. So yes, of course, they could, you know, hike the price up of chocolate and whatever, but I, I hope it would make them think of what else could we put in there that is not so much sugar and that's not so much salt. If that's the results that come out of it, then that would be good. If it is, you know, as you say, uh, a hike of prices in the shops, then obviously that's not the results that we want. It's not that products need to be more expensive, the same thing. We want to make sure that what is available in the shops will be healthier so that if you buy that bar of chocolate or you buy uh, an apple or whatever, it will be healthier as such, as opposed to your bar of chocolate being more expensive. All right, Portia Berry Gil uh, Kilby, what's the problem there then? I mean, we saw something similar that happened when they brought in the, the, the tax for the most sugary soft drinks. Some soft drinks became more expensive, but many, many soft drinks, the manufacturer said, right, we'll avoid this tax by coming up with a new formula which made soft drinks healthier for everyone. Surely this is something similar that's being proposed. Yeah, but in that year, even when with the increase in the tax on the sugar and they reduce the sugar, the average sugar consumption that year remained the same for the average person. Similarly, under these proposals with the full implementation of it, it's only meant to save the average person 38 calories a day by Henry Dimbleby's own calculations. So it seems that it's going to cost people more for an average saving of four pounds in terms of weight loss in a year, um, which seems slightly small, slim savings um, for an increase in your pocket. I mean, that's a pretty good point, isn't it, uh, there, uh, uh, Anne, the, that if it's just such a minor adjustment to someone's calorie consumption and it's only going to give them a tiny bit of weight loss over the course of the year, it hardly seems worth it. And... If, unfortunately, another point that, that would give me rise for concern is if the manufacturers say, well, look, actually, we can't change the recipe. This chocolate is as, as healthy as we can possibly make it. Dare we say we don't want to change the recipe because we can't like the way it tastes. Well, inevitably, the higher taxes that they're going to be charged are going to be passed on to the consumer. They're not going to stomach that, no pun intended. They're going to say, right, well, we'll put 5p on the price of our whispers or we'll make our dairy milk bar you know, 10 grams lighter. Which is what they've done with the top of rain, if you remember. The, well, yeah, so, so, uh, so it will be the consumer day. that ends up ends up paying, wouldn't it? Yeah, but but it, it's it's a problem that is not just about the price of the food. It's, it's a much bigger thing. It has to come from lots of different sides, really, if we want to really properly tackle it. From the food manufacturers, from uh, uh, education, when it uh, education when it comes to cooking, teaching people how to cook uh, with fresh ingredients, show people how to you know eat other stuff than just chocolate and crisps. And I'm not saying you shouldn't eat chocolate and crisps; you can, but obviously reduce that as much as possible. 
what we've seen though over the years, I mean, that fat tax has been going on for years and years and years and nothing has been happening so far. I mean, look, and look, look. I see the logic in as much as if it raises something for the Treasury, as it does with the price of cigarettes, to pay for the treatment of obesity on the NHS. I actually see that logic. But I can't believe, for someone, I don't know if you heard my introduction, I've gained and lost 100 stone minimum in my life. I have battled with my weight for, for decades. I have gone up and down like there is no tomorrow. I've done every single diet going. I've had eating disorders. I've had therapy. I have had the lot and i actually cannot believe that a report commissioned by the government in my opinion has just come up with the most simple and dare i say almost asinine response this going oh well we'll just take a bit of money or a, or a bit of tax on companies rather than getting to the root of what this is all about the diet industry having failed people for decades selling quick fixes that ultimately don't work the supermarket and food industry having failed people by writing healthy choice on things that people are all fooled into buying that aren't healthy in the slightest and a complete lack of support mental health support for those people who find themselves in a in a cycle where they are constantly choosing the wrong foods we don't say when it comes to alcoholics as a simple fix oh we'll just put 10p on the cost of booze and that'll solve it all we say actually they need mental health help because they're addicted we don't advertise drugs in supermarkets but people still take them there are all sorts of ways in which people are addicted to things food being one of them the wrong food choices the sugar in foods being one of them and i cannot believe that the solution they've come up with is oh well, we'll just stick a bit of tax on it that'll solve it all yeah, it seems incredibly condescending that this is the solution. You can go to Aldi or Lidl and buy a bag of veg for 30 or 40p, um, but if you don't have the parents home to make that food, to make a vegetable soup from scratch or a veggie lasagna, which you're still going to get taxed on the cheese, that's not a solution. You need to look at what, why are people eating unhealthily? And I just find it patronizing that you're then going to have children going off to a GP to be given fruit well, it's just, that's not going to stop them from also eating McDonald's. Well, as long as you go for the driving force, I mean, Anne, am I on to something with this? Because, I mean, there is a reason why people are making those choices that are harming them. And it's a reason way above whether it costs 10 or 20p more, isn't it? It definitely is. And it comes from uh, upbringing. It comes from habits. It comes from what's happened in your life in Comfort. general. And, and how do you associate uh, food with comfort as well so yes it comes from lots of different things definitely so so are we sort of all in agreement that there might be a few uh, <laughs> to use food analogies this has the ingredients perhaps of one or two aspects that might be uh, worth looking at but overall this report is a big old miss isn't it it's one little drop in the ocean of the problem definitely so what if you were sitting in front of the government right now and if we try and get some consensus here, I'll start with you, Anne. What, what would you say needs to be done if there's a multi-pronged approach over and above 20p going on a bar of chocolate or to a company that, that manufactures it? What would you be suggesting? Cooking lessons, again, in school. Uh, changing the food that kids get at school as well. Giving lessons to adults as well who haven't had the opportunity to do some cooking lessons. Um making sure that healthy food is accessible and and uh, achievable for people on low income as well as opposed to um just you know quite high high stuff in the supermarkets um and lots of education but also some workshops some educational but, stuff again, about habits respectfully Anne. Do you really need to have a government stepping in with cooking lessons for adults? I mean, how what, what lessons do you need to fry some onions, put some tomato and some vegetables in a pan and well, have it with some brown you, rice? What, what You could, you could go on the internet surprised. now and find countless healthy, cheap yeah. recipes for vegetables. You'd be surprised how much people, and it's one of those things that, that I see with my clients, for instance, that how to organise yourself, how to find a time, how to batch cook, it's not just about how to make it from scratch. It's what do you do with it? How do you keep it? How do you make um, your mincemeat 
last longer by using it for different recipes that you can then freeze and then reheat when when instead of then ordering oh, pizza. All right, let, let me give let me give Portia the chance to well firstly respond to Anne's ideas and maybe come up with some of your own, please. Yeah, I think it's important that especially at children's age they learn how to cook for themselves to prevent any problems later in life. But there's one thing eating healthily. And then there's another about having a healthy lifestyle. And if you don't have time to make healthy food, if you don't have nice green outdoor spaces to go for a walk or a run um, with either yourself as an adult or with your family, then you can't don't always have the money to spend on an expensive gym membership. Um, there are, it's not just having healthy food available. And what do you think the government uh, should be doing. I mean, uh, for me, they should be subsidising or giving tax breaks on gym memberships. They should be incentivising rather than penalising through higher prices. But what would you, if you could give a suggestion to the government, suggest they did? Yeah, I think either healthier, um, sorry, either cheaper gym options or build whenever you're building new places, build them with a green area so that you're not running through the streets of a town or a city, but you have a park to run through um, to make it incentivize people to go out and get active would uh, be a place to start all right but of course they've got to have the mental health uh within themselves i think the good mental health in order to want to do that good ideas there from both of the you annie archie weight loss and healthy lifestyle coach portia berry kilby uh, from young voices uk thank you for taking the time both of you to discuss that here